This episode is brought to you by Dashlane. Try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days at dashlane.com slash infographics. And never forget another password and keep all your online accounts secure. With cybercrime on the rise, governments around the world have seriously stepped up their digital law enforcement efforts, often to great success. While most hackers nowadays are easily caught and punished, others have evaded law enforcement for years, while others still were hacking legends in their day and practically barred from ever touching a computer again. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Infographic Show. Today we're taking a look at hackers governments around the world fear. Kevin Mitnick began his criminal career as a young teenager when in 1976, at 16 years old, he broke into Digital Equipment Corporation's computer network and copied their software. Then, in 1981, he stole computer manuals from Pacific Bell. A year later, he reported to have hacked into the US's early warning system at North American Defense Command, the story inspiring the 1983 film War Games. However, later in life, Mitnick would go on to deny the story as ridiculous. Mitnick finally made a name for himself after being released from jail in 1989 and put on three years supervised release. Toward the end of his parole, Mitnick hacked into Pacific Bell voicemail computers and a warrant was immediately put out for his arrest, prompting Mitnick to flee and go into hiding. For two and a half years, Mitnick was a fugitive, but continued his hacking spree and used cloned cell phones to hide his location while copying proprietary software from some of the nation's largest cell phone and computer companies. He also intercepted and stole computer passwords, altered computer networks for companies around the nation, and broke into and read thousands of private emails. The FBI caught up with Mitnick on February 15, 1995, at his apartment in Raleigh, North Carolina, finding him with more than 100 cloned cell phones, cell phone codes, and multiple fake IDs. Charged with 14 counts of wire fraud, 8 counts of possession of unauthorized access devices, interception of wire or electronic communications, unauthorized access to federal computers, and causing damage to a computer, Mitnick accepted a plea agreement and was sentenced to 46 months in prison plus 22 extra months for violating the terms of his 1989 supervised release. Mitnick would go on to serve most of his prison time in solitary confinement due to law enforcement officials convincing a judge that Mitnick would start a nuclear war by dialing into the NORAD modem via a payphone from prison and communicate to it by whistling. A ridiculous claim, no doubt, but to a less than tech-savvy 1990s America, a valid fear. Released in January of 2000, Mitnick would go on to form his own security consulting company and has collaborated many times with the FBI. However, given his massive skill set, there's little doubt that the government keeps a very close eye on Mitnick to this day. Anonymous The world's largest group of hacktivists, Anonymous is a loose collective of hackers from around the world. Portrayed as modern-day digital vigilantes, Anonymous has no leadership, no centralized command structure, and no shared goals or aims, making it a difficult organization for law enforcement to handle. Anon's roots are in the early days of the internet, when groups of people would flock to image-based bulletin boards such as 4chan to post images and swap stories. Getting their name from the anonymity that came from posting without a username, the group was initially nothing more than a large collection of pranksters known for hacking into office networks and doing things like sending black faxes, faxes that used up all of a fax machine's black ink to create a solid black fax. Over the years though, Anonymous would gain in momentum and started shifting its aim to bigger targets, gaining prominence with their Project Chanology, a raid on the Church of Scientology, which they saw as exploiting people and stifling free speech. This garnered Anonymous many fans and for years the Church of Scientology had been slowly exposed as being corrupt and exploitative to a criminal degree, destroying people's lives and ripping families apart while turning its members into cult drones. The hacktivist group would then resurface in force in defense of WikiLeaks after the US government took action against the foundation for the posting of hundreds of thousands of classified documents. Once more, they appeared to be the vigilantes fighting against Big Brother for the common man. Yet those same documents Anonymous was trying to protect led to the deaths of dozens of Afghan collaborators when Taliban leaders scoured the leaked documents for names and caused dozens of international diplomatic crises. Worst of all, the same organization they fought so hard to protect would in turn end up aiding the Russian government indirectly influencing the 2016 American election, firmly going against Anonymous's alleged democratic values. However noble Anonymous's actions have been portrayed at times, there exists a very dark side to the group with just as many, if not more, outright malicious deeds to their credit as there are good. 
After their raid on Scientology, Anonymous then gathered together to flood the forums of the Epilepsy Foundation with flashing images. They also routinely engaged in disseminating revenge porn from spurned men by hacking into the social media accounts of women and posting graphic personal images for public view, while often sending them to everyone on that person's account. Their harassment also extended into the real world, with threatening voicemails sent to victims. Anonymous is both everything that's right and everything that's wrong with the internet. Hiding behind their anonymity, they may at times be a tool to fight against corruption, but the very next day may well be ruining the reputations of innocent people and publicly humiliating them, just for the lulls. As best described by a former member, Anonymous are typically young, impulsive, and naive with computer talents that give them far more power than they're responsible to wield making grandiose statements of purpose that sound cool, but doing things that often fall far short of their stated ideals. Astra For years, a hacker known by his online moniker of Astra routinely penetrated the systems of France's Dassault Group, a major French defense firm specializing in aviation. Able to penetrate into extremely sensitive digital networks, a multi-government effort finally brought the hacker to justice in 2008, revealing him to be a 58-year-old Greek mathematician. After five years of hacking into Dassault Group's network, Astra had caused $361 million worth of damage to the company and sold sensitive data on everything from avionics to weapon systems to 250 different buyers across the internet. Details about Astra remain few and far in between, and today many people believe that this world-class hacker is now cooperating with European governments against other cybercriminals. Fancy Bear Perhaps the most famous name in criminal hacking today, Fancy Bear is not an individual but rather a collection of hackers whom are widely suspected to be directly overseen and financed by Russia's GRU intelligence agency. Despite denying their involvement with the criminal hackers for years, Fancy Bear methods, actions, and resources are consistent with the capabilities of state actors. The group also routinely targets NATO and Balkan state government, military, and security organizations, a fact that we're sure is pure coincidence. Fancy Bear is directly credited with attacks on the German parliament, French television station TV5 Monde, and the White House, NATO, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and the campaign of French presidential candidate Emmanuel Macron, a known hardliner against Russian aggression. The group, however, rose to public notoriety after their attacks against the Democratic National Committee during the 2016 presidential election and the leaking of Democratic emails in order to help Donald Trump win the election. Perhaps Fancy Bear's most well-known operative goes by the persona Guccifer 2.0 and claims sole responsibility for the releasing of the DNC's emails. However, in 2018, Robert Mueller's investigation into Russia's meddling of the American election revealed that Guccifer was not an individual but a collection of Russian intelligence officers, whom have been indicted and face the possibility of extradition and jail time if they ever leave home again. Fancy Bear may indeed thus be one of the most feared hacker groups in the world, but it seems that the most feared hackers of all may just be the US's FBI, with the power to unmask Russia's best efforts to remain anonymous. There may be plenty of hackers out there that the government fears, but that doesn't mean that you should too. With Dashlane, you can browse the web safely, taking advantage of their one-click VPN that encrypts your online activity. Plus, when you store all of your passwords and credit cards with Dashlane, you can check out from any online marketplace with the same ease. And with constant automated monitoring of your accounts, you'll be instantly notified of any security breaches or data leaks. Head on over to dashlane.com infographics for a free 30-day trial, and if you use the coupon code infographics, you can get 10% off a premium subscription today. If you thought this video was interesting, make sure you check out our other video, Hackers Who Now Work for the Government. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content.